wonderful family. It's another beautiful day here and I'm grateful that you allowed me into your space. God bless you real good. Today one wants to talk about um, another aspect of faith. Um, actually, the aspect of doubt as it relates to faith. And I want us to quickly jump into the scripture. Uh, what, what is doubt? Uh, doubt is a, is a situation where there is a wavering of opinion. You are here and there, here and there. Now, um, actually, let's go into scripture. Let's first read from Mark chapter 11, from verses 22, to hear from the Master himself. He says, I read from the Amplified, and I might add the King James also. And Jesus replied and said to them, Have faith in God constantly. Truly I tell you, whosoever says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. Praise God. Things being done for you is predicated on the fact that you don't doubt in your heart what you believe. You don't doubt at all in your heart. So, if we remove the aspect of doubt and talk, just talk about belief in your heart, everybody could just get it by believing. But there's a specific reason why doubt is mentioned there. It's called diakrino. That is the Greek word diakrino. It's a waver between two opinions. So it means that there's another, there's a source of an opinion outside of what you've heard. So he's saying you've heard his word and then Nothing now competes in your heart with that word. And so you are focused on only that word. And then you will have what you say. Praise God. Don't take my word for it. Let us go uh, quickly to see um, certain incidents that happened. I want to read from Matthew chapter 14. And this is about where um, Peter walked on the water but but listen to it from here matthew chapter 14 from verses um, 23 i read from the amplified again and after he had dismissed the multitudes he went up into the hills by himself to pray when it was evening he was still there alone but the boat was by this time out of this out at out on the sea many furlongs a furlong is one eighth of a mile distant from the land beaten and tossed by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch, between 3 and 6 a.m. of the night, Jesus came to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost, and they screamed out with fright. But instantly he spoke to them, saying, Take courage, I am, stop being afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water, and he came towards Jesus. Notice, where was Peter going to? Peter was not going anywhere but going to Jesus. He had the word, come. So he was to come to Jesus. So his attention was supposed to be riveted on Jesus. He said, come, come to Jesus. Now Peter started coming. And he came towards Jesus. But when he perceived and felt the strong wind, he was frightened, and as he began to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me from death. Instantly, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and held him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you dare Why did you doubt? I read this particular scripture to throw some light. What causes doubt? Notice if you if you see it says but when he perceived and felt the strong wind he was frightened he was supposed to be looking at Jesus paying attention to what Jesus said but something caught his attention some other piece of information caught his attention not just what Jesus said come as long as he focused on that original piece of information he got that Jesus said come and he was focusing on Jesus he walked on the water but something distracted him, something, something sensory, something perceptual got his attention. And he paid attention to that. And when that happened, he became afraid. He saw things outside of what Jesus had said. 
and then fear came and he started sinking. Stick a pin there. Come with me to Mark chapter 5. This has to do with Jairus too. Um, where do I read from? I read from verse, verse um, 24. No, verse 22. Then one of the rulers of the synagogue came up, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he prostrated himself at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. And Jesus went with him, and a great crowd kept following him and pressed him from all sides so as to almost suffocate him. Then we'll jump and come down to verse 35. In this interlude, between when Jesus left with Jairus, and this verse 35, the woman with the issue of blood had interrupted Jesus' movement. So time had been wasted. Now read, read with me. Verse 35, while he was still speaking, there came some from the ruler's house who said to Jairus, Jesus, Jairus had made a faith pronouncement. Jesus has already started coming. Now some information was coming to Jairus from the outside. They said to Jairus, your daughter has died. That is outside of keeping with what Jesus had. What he and Jesus had agreed. He had said, come, lay your hands on my daughter. She will be healed and she will, she would leave. She won't die. But they came and said to Jairus. Who said to Jairus, your daughter has died. Why bother and distress the teacher any further? Verse 36. Overhearing but ignoring what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. I remember in Peter's case, something something perceptual came and got his attention. In this scenario, it was words that came and got Jairus' attention, away from the initial words that were spoken. So, sensory things come in if you give them attention. And they will cause you now to start wavering. Information will now start clashing. Which information do you believe? Which report do you believe? Do you believe what God has said or do you believe what this information that is physical that you can see is said? Now, come with me quickly. Just one chapter behind. Mark chapter 4 from verses um, 18. This is where Jesus was talking about the par parable of the seed and the sower. He had talked of different types of uh, seeds so, and uh, different soils. But in this particular one, he's talking about from verse 18, he's talking about seeds sown on, on thorny ground. I read, and the, and the ones sown among the thorns are ones who hear the word. The word has come. Then the cares and anxieties of the world and distractions of the age. Note that distractions of the age. The seed, the, the wind was a distraction of the age. The, the information that came from Jairus' servants was a distraction of the age. And the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the cravings and passionate desire for other things to creep, for, for other things creep in and choke and suffocate the world and it becomes fruitless. So those counter-information, if you allow them come in, if you pay attention to them, they will come in and choke the world and render that world fruitless. That is where that's the point where they will come and it's like coming to sow seed and sow weeds. If you allow those weeds coming and they compete with the seeds, good seed, they will choke those seeds. That's what brings down. So you waver between two opinions. Now listen to what I call the cream de la cream. Verse 23. Of the same Mark chapter 4. If any man has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him perceive and comprehend. Then he drops the bomb here. And he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear, or to what you hear, will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you, and more besides will be given to you who hear. So what you expose yourself to after you've exposed yourself to the word will determine whether that there will be weeds competing with the word. In essence, 
do not after hearing the word expose yourself to contrary information that will bamboozle your before you do not there that's where you now give yourself that challenge once you hear the word keep yourself exposed only to the word not to any contrary piece of information you don't need it as long as god has spoken that is final run with it don't mix don't get yourself more information from the world so to speak you have the final word that is final keep it final keep it before you don't expose yourself and then you 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 have your eye will be single it says if thine whole if thine eye be single thine whole body shall be full of light and that is where faith works i hope i've been able to communicate as to what brings down when you expose yourself to contrary information, I mean, what you hear, what you see, what you feel, what you perceive, those are not important. For the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sensory perceptions, not by other pieces of information that come to compete with the Word of God. If you want to succeed, hide yourself from all those contrary pieces of information, those what, what the Bible calls the evil reports. That way, you will be single-hearted, single-minded, and you will get what God has said. God bless you. Glory be to God.